Hi there Maple fans and in this series of videos I'll be sharing what I do throughout an entire year on a monthly basis. Please note that these months are based on UK timings but of course can easily be adapted to anywhere else in the world. So in this June video I'm going to discuss whether all maples need shade. So why is this relevant? Well because many of you will have bought maples in the last few weeks or months and quite frankly the weather in the UK at least has been that appallingly dull that where the trees were wouldn't make a great deal of difference. But here's the weather report for this week from the UK and you can see temperatures are climbing, we've got lots more direct sun, so suddenly it could become an issue. So the first thing to say is aces like this Shana are perfectly fine in full sun. They really are, at least in the UK, not a problem at all. Another example, this Shisha Gashira, fantastic in full sun in North America, Europe, UK, um, just a really, really durable plant. You also have a category of plant like this Moonrise, where if you put it into more sun, it will kind of go darker, it changes, it adapts, it becomes this sort of orangey colour. Or indeed you've got this Ruby Cascade, where in fact it doesn't really look like Ruby Cascade, because that implies red, so that can be an issue too. So this is Jerry Swartz, which I have in the sort of classic morning sun, afternoon shade position. And it's absolutely super. I mean, it, it, it goes this pink color in the spring and it stays this lovely pink color all year. So this is a tree where you could put this in the shade by all means, but it will just stay kind of dark green. It really isn't that interesting at all. So this is one where you get to choose as the owner of the tree what you want to do with it. Whereas as we've come on to, there are trees that are much more shade loving. So just to show you here, this is where the Jerry Swartz is. It's in a corner, the sun is setting behind the fence on the right hand side so this is the classic sort of morning sun afternoon shade scenario now maybe you haven't got any shade in your garden at all other than the kind of wall like that so i've actually constructed a shade here to, to give me a shady area of course the other way to go which is perfectly fine is to grow something like Sirio, a very fast growing tree that's really really sun tolerant and in a pot it's sort of outgrown most of the trees and if not all of the ones that were bought at the same time. Uh, it loves the sun, it's not a problem. And the habit of this tree, as you can see, is to sort of grow up and outwards to make it kind of canopy. So you imagine that in a year or two is gonna make a wonderful shade for other trees. Or actually in the ground, it really, really grows fast. Just going back to this Ruby Cascade, uh, this is a typical example. You may well at this point during the season, it's June in the UK. So we're talking about early summer really find that the names of your trees don't seem to work anymore they don't seem to make sense so in this case ruby cascade does not have enough sunlight um, to send its leaves red so if i wanted that to live up to its name and reputation i'd put in more sun um, and that would sort of solve that problem really so worth mentioning that any ace at all can be grown in shady conditions absolutely fine but the question is is it actually desirable so for example this moonrise is an absolutely lovely tree and if you give it sort of a, a reasonable dollop of sun, then it goes this absolutely exquisite kind of orangey red color, um, which looks rather, rather super really, and kind of lives up to its name again as Moonrise. It's kind of a colorful moon, I suppose, really, um, and looks absolutely, absolutely splendid. So that's a lovely tree that you can put out into, into sun. Um, I might protect it from sort of midday sun later on in the season, but if you didn't actually do that, it would look like Jordan, which is kind of its cousin, really, and be sort of vivid green. On the other hand, this Viridis, which is supposed to be a, you know, a very lush green looking dissector maple, as you can see, is sort of fringed with red. And that's because it, I, I've had it in too much sun. It was on the opposite side of the garden I showed you with the Jerry Swartz. And actually, even though it only had sun in the morning, What's happened is that's enough for the tree again to sort of try to adapt itself and change colour and therefore we have the reg pigmentation. And just to say if you'd like to come with me on my Acer journey, please do like and subscribe to my little channel, it really really helps. I've also recently set up a Patreon site, so that's a great way of supporting me too and help out with some of the costs of my excursions really. There's also the offer of some personal help um, if you'd like it, um, either in a group format or on a one-to-one -one basis. So trees that definitely need some shade, in my opinion, are new ones. So these have been bought very recently. Um, they may have lived their life in a polytunnel their entire life. Um, so actually, they're not used to the outdoors. So 
putting from that nice snug environment straight into the big wide world in my garden might be a bit too much for them uh, they also don't have many leaves on them so if some get actually burned there aren't many to for the tree to fall back on so i think these young trees are better to left to acclimatize i must say however it's important to note that for this particular grower is excellent because they are left out to the elements more so again they might not be quite as trimmed and pretty as something from a supermarket but actually they're much more hardy and will get used to weather much quicker so I could probably move these out into a bit more sunlight kind of a lot earlier um, because they're just more acclimatized to start with really. So we'll just move on to another class of tree. I don't like generalizing, but there's so many cultivars you kind of have to. Um, so this Shiraz here, gorgeous little tree, it really, really is. But generally speaking, the ones that are quite variegated, there's different colored leaves, the swirly leaves and all the rest of it, they just sort of benefit from more shade um they tend to burn in full sun most surely and at the very least they can get bleached out by too much sun so that can definitely be an issue um this little fella here which is taylor actually i'm not that keen on this cultivar it's quite finicky so we can see some new growth right at the ends but i've had to move that and keep it in really deep shade to kind of help it recover but again, that's probably a good lesson. If, you, if your tree's suffering, if there's a problem, uh, keep it out of wind, keep it out of direct sunlight. That can only help matters. Now here we have Jordan, which is a super, super, super tree. And from my experience, this definitely burns remarkably quickly in direct sun. It's not about heat, it's not about wind. Literally direct sunlight on these leaves um, will make them go, first of all, yellow, and then they have kind of brown spots on them. It's very peculiar. But why would you want to put this tree out in full summer and sort of damage it? Um, it's a beautiful shade tree because it has that lovely, lovely yellowy green um, brightness to it, which lights up a shady area. So why not leave it where it is? So the butterfly behind has got, again, these sort of lovely twisting, um, crazy leaves, lots of variegation on them. Again, this one, very, very good in shade indeed. It lights that shady area up anyway it, it's what you'd want um, otherwise the leaves will get damaged by full sun and but left like that you get these lovely buttery leaves with a little lime green color absolutely lovely so just moving on to orange dream I, I have mentioned this in previous videos but beautiful beautiful tree that sold absolutely everywhere sometimes on its own roots at a reduced price and sometimes and what I'd always recommend is probably a grafted tree it's probably better but this is a grafted tree. It's done really, really well. But if you put it in sun, it really hates it. It doesn't like it at all. Um, you can just see there, it, it, there's a little bit of burn because it gets a bit too much sun at the end of the day. But another one for keeping in plenty of shade, or like my one that's planted the ground, morning sun and afternoon shade, and it does extremely well. So whenever I post pictures of this online in Facebook or whatever, everyone loves this tree. It, it looks quite amazing, really. But as you can see again very very intense variegation and this one lots of tlc lots of shade looks absolutely brilliant really it, it's purple in color anyway so it gives gives interest to those shady areas and paired with the sort of white tree behind it um just that just enhances it really so ukigumo classic shade lover it likes shade it really does and it looks brilliant in shade so again it's a bit of a win-win scenario really um, if you put it into a bit more sun, you'll get slightly pinky leaves and stuff like that. But I think maximum shade on this tree, it lights up the area, looks amazing. And as you can see, it's really thriving as well because it's putting out sort of new branches in all different directions. So that's really, really promising for the future. So spare the water on that one, but a really, really good shade tree. So just to give you another thought about shading your Japanese maples, this is Asa Sharon and it doesn't need particularly great shade to be honest with you but i'm just amazed in shade how it retains its red color so a lot of the red maples will actually go green because they change their color chlorophyll mix get more green pigment to try and absorb more light i guess but that one is a really really good backdrop to some of these other trees so really you know for shady areas you could put bright everything in there but it's never quite as good as sort of mixing and matching really because the variation in colors kind of show each other off really well. 
So here we have Extravaganza. You know, what a great name tree. It's really extravagant. It's really beautiful. And there you've got the sort of darker leaves combined with the lighter pink leaves. So again, you've got contrast, you've got some difference, which really in a shady area is invaluable and carries it off really, really well. It's nice in shade as well to sort of mix up leaf form and patterns and stuff like that. And that Hima Shoujo, really, really nice colors. The new growth is kind of light red on dark red. Looks really impressive. And actually this little Wilson's Pink Dwarf as well, um, again, super for a shaded area because the green leaves behind really sort of highlight the new growth, which is kind of red. So it looks like it's spring or something that it's kind of like this. This is all new. It's quite exciting, really. But in fact, it's going to do that all through the growing season, which is lovely. So here we have two Dragon Master weeping aces on a wall. And this is just really to say, you know, do your research. This is basically an orange dream kind of weeping variant. It's almost like a cross between orange dream and Ryusen. Now, Ryusen is really, really sun tolerant, but orange dream isn't. So I think the best thing to do is to keep this in full shade, really. Again, it's going to weep down. It's going to make a nice backdrop and, you know, just kind of add something to the, the whole scene, really. So just kind of panning it across and around. Um, I hope you can see what I'm trying to do here. Mix of colors, mix of textures. There's some hosta there in the foreground. There's an orium there on the bottom left, which had some bright yellow. Um, again, if you have a mixture of different colors and different forms, each one sort of highlights the other. They all show each other all off in a better light. The temptation is, if you're not careful, to get everything under here that's all green, it's all red, and it just loses that interest, really. So in some senses, this is part one of two videos because next week I'll absolutely be showing you these trees. Um, I do hope you like and subscribe and stick with me on my journey, and we'll have a look at Japanese maples that absolutely love full sun.